when he uh, spit out water, we started to um, turn him sideways so he could have the weight to clear his airway. His airway. Yep. So I told his father to bring, bring in the vehicle to, to transport him to um, the hospital. He was exam He was um, treated and was um, he was at the hospital for three days due to the chemicals and so forth. It was desperation. I didn't know what if to laugh, cry. I don't know really. But um, after a while that the kid had already revived and everything, I felt strong. Koi has already saved one life, but continues to upgrade his training. He will attend the course tomorrow morning. Daryl is being interviewed on local television with Anthony Anderson, the co-chair of the San Pedro branch of the Red Cross. It's a great opportunity for them to talk first aid to the people of Ambergris Key. Well, thank you very much for the time and the opportunity to talk a little bit about the Red Cross. In the last year or so, we've tried to make a real strong comprehensive push to try and train as many of the residents here in San Pedro in basic first aid. When you come here to Belize, you will be frustrated. There is absolutely no question about that because the amenities that you are used to on a daily basis are not available here. Anthony was born in Belize, but has lived much of his life in the U.S where he has had years of experience providing humanitarian aid. Work that has proven to be invaluable in his position with the Red Cross. However, it doesn't mean that you cannot take what you have learned and find a way to adapt your experiences to fit what the need is locally. But you cannot do so from a top-down perspective. You have to meet people where they are, and it is about being humanitarian. Uh, we're going to be here, I think, uh, every year for many years to come, and we have a great relationship with the uh, Belize Red Cross. And it's about it's, uh, first it's respecting that each and every individual and, uh, that you encounter and, uh, are just as important as you are. No more so, no less. And if you start from that perspective, and it's not so much about what I can do for you, but here are the experiences that I have that I feel is worthwhile. Now you tell me how I can help. Given one, I have the commitment to do so, and that's the thing that I love about Bandage International, and that is there's not a catch. There are no fine prints in the contract where we're gonna do this, but we want this in return. I'm not looking to be famous. I'm not looking for any reward. I'm not looking for a thank you. Here in San Pedro, Bandage International will be training business owners and staff, Red Cross members, and just everyday people in the community who want to take the next step to becoming a good lifesaver. We train their staff, but their staff aren't, you're only at work part time. So when you're not at work, you're out in your community, you're with your family, this sort of thing, which is most likely where emergencies or accidents are gonna happen. When we started doing the training with Bandage International, if, if there was any initial reluctance on, on, the, on the part of any staff people, we, we were able to sit down and discuss how this, this, this wasn't a skill that they would just be able to use at, at, at work. Um, if they left Victoria House to work someplace else, they could, they could take this skill with them. It would make them more employable. And most everybody here has children, aunts, uncles, nephews, nieces. And the, the experience and the training that they, they get through Bandage International is, is invaluable.
Coy, who is a patrol officer with the South Abergus Key Neighborhood Watch, will be attending the course with many of his co-workers. I mean, that's, that's the best thing, is that when you see a, and you hear about these, these groups that are growing, I mean, that's why we're here. We're taking this knowledge, we're trying to have it multiply, have it grow locally. So when we hear about this group, this Ambergis Key Rescue Group happening, I mean, that's, that's not what it's all about. It's fantastic. These guys are taking the learning that we're giving and putting it into play so that they have the ability to respond when it comes necessary in their neighborhood, right? When their own community needs their help, they're there. All right, so now what I want to show you guys is we have two different types of AEDs. Um, I'm going to show you this right quick, and then hopefully we're going to have time to do We're going to split into two groups, and we're going to talk about AED training and use. Melody and myself are going to focus on CPR for adult children and infant. The other half of the class are going to be with Paul and Annie, and they're going to be focusing on patient assessment, walking into a scene, what are they looking for, clues, and then actually putting their hands on a patient and assessing. You're on Middle Street in San Pedro, and it's uh, early in the morning. There are lots of people walking, there are bicycles and golf carts and taxis and lots of business happening. And uh, uh, it's one of the, the, the I think, the, the taboos, one of the, the greatest, uh, most important barriers in all societies, as, as far as I'm concerned, is touching a stranger. Now, in rescue, that's the most important thing. You must touch the patient because they depend on you as their rescuer. And human touch is probably the single greatest thing that you can do to at least convey comfort and hope. Hi, I'm Paul. I'm a rescuer. Are you okay? No. Okay. All right. So, go ahead. Give that a try. Hello, Miss. My name is Mr. Rivera. I can help you with anything. All right. Who has never used or been trained or seen an AED used before? All right. So, all right, dear, you can come up. And one of the neighborhood watch guys, why don't you guys come up? Open great plastic case and peel off. Adhesive Turn it on and do exactly what it says. You have all just been trained in the use of an AED. <laughs> and what kind of impact is all this having? Because we have such a small budget, such, such small financial means, we don't really have a good ability to measure the outcomes of what we're doing. We don't know, is this making a difference or not? Hello. How are you? And what's your name? Nice to meet you, bud. We had arranged that I was going to go back a day or two early before the other guys, before the other teachers in our group. And I'm traveling back through the U.S. on a plane by myself at Christmas time through bad weather, getting delayed at multiple stops along the way in Houston and Toronto. And I was getting more and more uh, disillusioned with the whole process. The day I arrived back, I got the email telling us about this rescue that happened in Belize where a little boy was found unresponsive in the swimming pool and someone nearby knew what to do. Guys, one of the things that our charity is about is about coming here and teaching you guys so that if there's an emergency that takes place, you guys have the training to help somebody else. And that sold me. I said, okay, well that's why I'm doing this. That's why I have to keep coming back. So two years ago, 2011 in November, we taught a course, uh, Paul was there, Melody was there, and myself, that Coy took from us. Before that course, there were, he had never had any medical training at all. The day after the course, he had to successfully resuscitate his nephew uh, by doing CPR when he was four years old. I will do this for the rest of my life, knowing that that one person was saved. It makes all this work that we do worthwhile. So I want to present Koi and make him an honorary member of Bandage International. <laughs> and congratulate him for all the work that he did to have this little guy with us today. There you go, man. The truth is, you know, I'm a doctor. You know, Daryl's a paramedic. We're nice guys, but we're not salespeople, right? You know, Melody's a nurse. I mean, she's and she's a super person. She's quiet. You know, these these personalities, we do very well with what what we do, but it's not enough, really. We need more. We need more help. We need more of our support. We need more uh, knowledge about this. And only through those things can we make this really happen. <laughs> A 
lot of it is basic stuff that we would take for granted every day, but to see the impact that it has on these people. I, I didn't do too well. I was, I was, I, it, it was hard to, you know, it's, <laughs> it's hard, man. This is the happy part. You know, it's, this when, you have part. A, when you have an eight year old home, right? You know, what people think is tropical, tropical paradise and uh, the level of healthcare is not there. You know, that kid got a second chance. Yeah. And we got to play soccer with him. Yeah, we got to play soccer with him. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I pulled every muscle in my body trying to do so. <laughs> Belize is a young country building for the future, and Bandage International is proud to be a part of that. Now, the team will travel home, reflecting on the success of the journey and understanding there is always more knowledge to share.